Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, this video is going to talk about the uh, new sort of substructure of the modular boards that I've been working on. Um, I've always been disappointed with their uh, <clears throat> with their durability at the edges and the corners, as well as the difficulty in getting them to lay flat and have a perfect height when they tile, um, and of course also being perfectly square. All of these things uh, are a challenge, and with uh, just the basic foam uh, for the substructure, that is really compromising some of those uh, attributes. So what I've been doing is I purchased a, a silver bullet die cutter. Um, I will be talking about that in future videos, uh, but um, what I wanted to do is show you today um, how I've been cutting um, styrene. I'm using .06 uh, styrene sheets to uh, cut the t cut the basic edges of the boards. I'm attempting to cut them perfectly with the die cutter. That's one of the reasons why I purchased it. Um, and this way I can improve their durability, make sure that they're sitting flat on the table, um, control their height, make the height perfect for them, and um, bring up their uh, durability and, and their tiling as well. And it gives me a chance to try to correct their squareness if I have miscut the foam by a small margin. So, um, let's take a closer look at these boards. I'll show you some of those features. So here you can see the uh, ocean board and the board edges. Um, so as I mentioned before, I am um, cutting these board edges um, so that they um, tile perfectly. And I've also um, realized that I can make, and I don't know if those are going to show. Oh, I think they are. Um, I've made score marks in the uh, styrene so that I will be able to pour the water to a perfect point uh, when I do all of the ocean boards so the water levels um, and the color gradations should match from board to board. The um, boards have been um, sanded after I've carved them. I've, I've roughly carved them. I've just gone over them with a palm sander. And um, then you probably notice, of course, all of the uh, joint compound. Uh, normally, I would use drywall spackle, uh, not drywall spackle, um, lightweight spackle for these kinds of applications because it doesn't shrink when it dries. Um, I'm out of lightweight spackle, and I happen to have a huge tub of joint compound, so I'm using it for the moment. Uh, but um, what I've done is I've tried to ensure along those edges that they're relatively um, flat here, so we don't see a very sharp uh uh, gradation uh, in the color between two boards. And um, what this allows me to do is that when I set this down, the uh, styrene, and I glue it to the foam, what I'm doing is I'm letting the foam lay as it wants to. So often the foam is, is warped, so it sits down warped, that's fine. I attach the styrene to the edges, and then where it's high, I can take it down and where it's low, I can build it up. And that um, eliminates me putting force on the boards to try to get them to sit flat. Now, these actually do not sit flat. You'll notice that little rock. And that has to do with the large area that's been carved, and that allows it to uh, flex a little bit. I was hoping that the styrene would be strong enough to help hold them in place. Nah, it's not. I think that was uh, ambitious. Um, and um, I have thought about putting in, oh, you can't see that. Oh, I'll show you in a little bit. Um, I thought about putting um, reinforcers under the bottom to uh, correct uh, warping. And I may explore that um, a little bit later. I've done some tests on it, and I'm not sure whether that's going to work or not. Um, so that's the basic premise. Um, again, because I have, you know, these uh, very standardized corners, I can uh, standardize heights. I can get a uniform height and um, a uniform bite on the table. Let's take a look at another board, and then we'll tile a couple together to show you. So um, this is a river board, and I'm going to talk about these corners in just a second, but I wanted to uh, emphasize, probably if some of you have been following my work for a while, you'll notice there's some significant changes here. I decided, since I had the opportunity to, um, you know, to cut these uh, uniformly every time, that it was an opportunity to redesign the river channel uh, so that I could increase its realism and give me more flexibility in how I work with it. So basically, I just cut a, a semi-stepped line here so that I could create, you know, almost like flood levels all the way up. And then I could fill the river to various heights, depending on how deep I wanted to go. And that would give me, you know, a nicer depth so that I could actually have the water transparent, um, put, you know, objects and, and uh, gravel and, and sunken logs underneath it um, and give me, um, hopefully, you know, quite a bit more realism. 
Um, so this was um, a major change and I think it's going to work out well. Um, then what you can see I've gone in and I've gone in and done some uh, modification. This is actually like a wood filler um, and I happen to have that around as well. Normally I'd use lightweight spackle, but this is uh, pretty nice because it doesn't shrink and it's, it's uh, fairly durable. Um, but it's, of course it's quite a bit more expensive, but I might as well use it up. Um, so then um, I can go in and build up areas if I want to modify that contour, you know, create a, a more uh, defined channel. Um, and of course, I then need, should I have moved the hot wire cutter out? I'm using a freehand router from the hot wire foam factory. I've shaped the blade roughly to match this, and then I can drag the blade um, all the way through the channel. So before people ask me how I cut this, the freehand router from the hot wire foam factory, and I did a review of this uh, tool way, way, way back, um, and uh, it's in my product reviews, I believe, so you can see it there, and I think the Hot Wire Film Factory actually has a link to it on their site. So, um, you can notice that I've um, had to fill, again, the warp of the board, so this board was actually sitting a little comme ça, and then uh, I had to fill this and um, shave this down. Unfortunately, because the joint compound shrinks, um, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, I think you can, uh, then it's um, actually sunk in a little bit. So I might do a quick touch-up, but of course I'm going to use foam coat over this, and uh, that will fill some of these areas, and so it won't show as, as much. So let's talk real quick about the corners before we move away from this view. The hot wire, I'm sorry, the die cutter, um, actually, I only learned recently, needs to be calibrated in order to cut a perfect length. Um, and so what happened is actually, for instance, this edge is supposed to be 19 and 7 eighths, and this edge is supposed to be 10. And so this would extend over a sixteenth of an inch here and a sixteenth of an inch there and that accounts for the one inch one eighth inch uh, gap uh, that this is cut shorter than the uh, board um, hopefully that makes sense to you but you can see here that it's actually extend extending beyond this board and that is because this was cutting long and so what I did is I mounted these on the side and then I had to do some trimming and it was not working out the way I wanted it to. I recently learned I can calibrate that, and so for future boards, I am getting them the right dimensions, um, although I have to keep track of that because it was shifting off the calibration. I'm still learning. So, um, you can see here, 19 and 7 eighths. Um, one of the other things about the bottoms, oh, so you can see this board is sitting, oh, but see how it's going a little, a little rock there. Um, again, you can tell that that rock is, um, partly due because of the channel was carved, and I'm also learning that some of the boards are sitting um, with a little bit um, uh, above the actual um, surface here. They're bowed, if you will, in the middle, um, so I will need to do just a hair of sanding, I think, in the middle to bring these boards um, flush, and as long as I don't touch the uh, uh, styrene, then you'll have a nice true edge on the table. And you also notice then I had to fill in um, some of the backside, and that is because in these areas, the uh, styrene is sitting proud from the surface of the foam and when you would drag it over the edge of a table it would get caught and I didn't want to see that um, you know basically ripping off the sides so I have to go in and bring that um, true to the edge so that it has a nice smooth uh, change from this lower surface here so this won't get caught on the edge. Um, so you can see here again I'm, I had some trouble with these um, but you know going forward I think I'm going to have a much better uh, joins on all these edges and this shouldn't show. So I'm going to move over to another table that's a little bit bigger so we can look at a few of these boards tiled and you can get a sense of how that's coming along. So here you can see um, two of the boards put together. This is a little bit of a bigger surface so they don't flop around. Although this table actually is bowed slightly so it will distort this just a hair. Uh, but in any case, you can see that I'm getting a, a very good seam uh, between the two boards and the joins are, are fairly tight actually. I've been pretty pleased with that. Um, there are a couple spots um, where I actually still haven't cleaned up. You can see a little bit here. I haven't cleaned up some of the joint compound that are sticking off the edges. That's just a quick scrape off. Um, but I've been really, really um, excited with how these edges are matching and they do seem to be um, quite a bit uh, you know, more uniform certainly than what I've been doing in the past. Um, let's see here if we can do another. Um, mm, oh, there we go. So we'll do that. 
So um, this actually highlights um, one of the problems that I've had. And um, actually, you can see these are not perfectly level here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, this board actually was not square. And so I actually had to add another layer of styrene to it. And that um, caused it um, to be a little thicker. And you can see here, I've just done a little fill on that that needs to be sanded down. Um, I'm not sure why this is a little bit off in height. That should not be happening, especially since the back is, um, oh, oh, it's a little off. Hmm. Well, you can see I'm still problem solving it, and I'm not afraid to show you some of that problem solving. Um, I'll have to check and see which board is off from the majority of them, um, because all the other ones have been tiling right. And in fact, let's grab another one. We'll problem solve it together right now. Uh, do do do. Do, do, do. That is the off-camera music. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. All right, so let's take a look. Ah, see, there we go. So the other board seems to be sitting a little high, and I'm not sure why, um, but these boards are lining up almost perfectly. Um, so I've actually been, um, this is also part of a calibration issue, uh, so I should um, be able to eliminate that down the road. And you can see here that these ocean boards are sitting not quite perfect, um, but if I push them down, then we get a nice seam there. So um, one of the things that happens with the ocean boards is because they have so much resin on them, right? Here's the um, shore. I've got this new gradual slope so I can bring the sand out and get a nice uh, color change coming up. Um, this actually adds quite a bit of weight to the front. And I actually super glue the boards down to keep them flat during the resin pour and then uh, the resin um, straightens them. So I shouldn't have any issues with warping on these, but I'm not sure about some of the um, normal 10 by 20 boards. And let's take a look at a couple of those just before we leave this view. So here we can see um, three of the standard size boards tiled together. Um, and there are some great things happening here and a couple problems. I'll show you one of those problems in a second. Um, again, because these boards were not, uh, the board edges were not cut uh, correctly, and I didn't want to throw out um, all of the styrene that I cut, partially because it took a very long time to cut them, and partly because I have gone through um, 10 18 inches by 24 inch sheets of styrene. Um, that's a lot of styrene, and I have a big pile of offcuts actually from it. But um, I, I have to at some point say it, it's okay at this stage. All the other boards that are coming down the pipe should actually have even better tight um, tolerances for their dimensions and their heights um, because I finally learned how to calibrate it. So um, in any case, what you can see here is that um, I have a really nice um, contiguous join with the uh, rivers. I'm very excited about that. I think that's going to look much tighter um, than it's ever looked before between the joins. Um, you can also see that I have um, pretty decent um, tiling uh, edges between them. And this is just off a little. I know, right? You're probably saying, really? But that, that really bugs me right there. Um, a couple of these are not perfectly square because when I cut the styrene edges, I had to cut it by hand, and so they're not exactly perfect as a result. Um, so again, I'm hoping that the future ones are going to be um, just a little bit better than what you see here. Um, but again, I have a really nice height tolerance. You can see they match almost perfectly all the way across, and they sit um, really nice and flat on the table. Um, I'm really, really excited about that. That has been a chronic problem over time. And of course, now we have the extra durability on the corners. So that's a big plus. Uh, let me show you one problem with the river tiling. If I tile them this way, for instance, and I line it up, you can see here it's off by um, just about a sixteenth of an inch. Um, oh, maybe that's almost an eighth. Um, that was a mistake I did, has nothing to do with the silver bullet. Um, when I created this edge, and I created this edge, um, I thought um, that I would just create, this is where the styrene would be, and you see if I have it at this edge, it matches perfectly, but of course this um, 16th here means that this 16th on this edge got pushed, and then when I tile them, you can see now it's pushed out of line with the at 10 inches. Mm, it was uh, not hard to fix, uh, and so I have it fixed for the future river cuts. 
Um, and I'll be able to hide this pretty easily with some vegetation. Um, I just have to fix a couple of these, uh, you know, uh, edges with some bushes and it won't really show. Um, but anyway, there's some of the challenges in designing the boards, um, just trying to get all of those shapes um, to perfectly match and, and yada yada. Um, but in any case, um, this gives you a look at how the um, new boards are coming along. I'm really excited about the new rivers. I think this is going to give me a lot more artistic freedom in how to fill them to improve their uh, look, bring them into a much more realistic state. Um, and depending on the kinds of requests the customers may have, you know, um, I want a very, very dry, shallow bed. I want a very uh, deep water um, that's heavy flowing. I can do all of those things now with these and have a really nice contour um, of the, the shading of the water if I fill it with a murky water uh, that you will be able to barely see the, you know, the bottom and then you'll be able to see uh, material as you come up into the shallower areas. And um, I'm working on and I'll continue to try to enhance um, where it makes a bend, bringing out you know, this sort of sandbar side and then doing a slightly deeper cut on this side as that's the way rivers really flow um, where they have they deposit material on the inside where they're traveling slowly and they erode um, a little bit more strongly on the outside. I'm not going to do too much more change than what you see here. I might do a little bit because, well, it's going to get bushes anyway. But um, uh, I want to see how these come out. And then, of course, as uh, you know, I do uh, future versions, um, that might be modified more and more as time goes on. So there is a look at all the work I have been doing to try to improve the modular boards. So that gives you a look at um, what I've been doing. And I have to say, it has been a bit of a journey. I've been saying that a lot lately. Um, but this is the final phase of what I'm calling my R and D uh, phase that I started at the beginning of this year. And uh, finally, I have um, a set of, of uh, uh, forces and speeds to run the die cutter to get the best effect on the styrene. Um, the die cutter cannot cleanly cut all the way through this level of thickness. Um, this is really pushing the blades um, to the max for the uh, die cutter. And so um, what I have to do is make a series of passes, um, decreasing the angle of the blades as I continue to go down. And I'm able to score about halfway through the styrene. And that allows me to then snap the pieces off. And I've been able to do that relatively easily. Um, so that took quite a while to dial in those numbers. Um, it took a while to uh, fix the or figure out and fix the calibration. I was asking lots of people on the forum and the manufacturer and the software. I was like, is it the software? Is it the, the die cutter? Did I break it? Because I've had some, you know, some, uh, I've pushed it to its limits, let's say. Uh, but it's a beast. The silver bullet is a beast. And I'm really looking forward to showing you more about that. Um, and then, of course, I had to do all this hand trimming on it. So gee, it's been a little bit to get to this point. Uh, but it should go faster now that I have all those numbers dialed in um, and I have about um, half of modular board set edged right now. So I get to uh, start finishing those while I edge the um, rest of them. I have ordered more styrene, um, eating that stuff up like it's candy. Um, in any case, um, that gives you a very uh, in-depth look at all of the changes that I'm trying to implement for the boards. I really have been wanting to do this for a very long time. I've always felt like um, you know, it's sort of like putting a nice paint job on a Toyota Echo that has 275,000 miles on it. It looks nice, but the underside of it is not so good. Um, so I'm really excited to be able to bring the uh, structure of these modular boards up to um, just about where I've always wanted them to be. So keep an eye on the channel. Um, hopefully you'll come back and join me. And thank you to all the new subscribers. Um, I welcome you and I thank you for um, finding my channel worthy enough to subscribe to. And I hope I can continue to give you the content that you're looking for. Um, and uh, I always say it, I have more videos to shoot, but I do. Um, so as soon as I get time to do that, um, I'll be putting out more videos that are not even related to these uh, boards. So hopefully you'll come back and join me then and I'll see you then.